पम Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fancy Hobo Improv Show live on YouTube. That's right, the only improv show spreading faster than a California wildfire and more consistent than our unemployment benefits. Yikes. My name is Tony Tarico, and I am going to be your host for the evening. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's show, wherever you might be. You might be watching this show on your phone while you're driving, and if so, good form. You might be watching this show on your phone while you're on the toilet, and if so, good form. Now, if you've never seen a fancy hobo show ever in your life, uh, this is how things are going to go tonight. Tonight, our players are going to be improvising short scenes and games all based on suggestions. That's right. This week, we took to our social media to get suggestions on our Facebook, on our Instagram, and on our Twitter. Uh, but it is not too late to get those suggestions into our show, so leave your best suggestion for any noun, any person, place, or thing in the comments, and we might use that uh, in our show. Now, since we are not performing in a theater tonight, and it's been so long that I don't think I remember what a theater looks like from the inside, we are still raising donations so that we can bring you more and more live streamed improv directly to you. So to make a donation directly to us, you can head to Venmo and send all donations to fans at Fancy Hobo Improv that is right there on the bottom right corner of your screen. You can also go to patreon.com slash fancy hobo to become a patron. Uh, and we, you know, any donation that you can make for the show, we really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to also like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Every single time you subscribe, it gets us closer and closer to that 100 uh, or 100, 1,000 subscriber goal that we have. Once we pass that, we can actually start making. That's when we make the big bucks, people. That's when we make the big bucks. So uh, I think you've heard me talk long enough. Uh, I think it's time to welcome our players to the virtual stage. Please give it up for a man who always leaves his mute button on, Phil Nieto. Oh yeah? Yeah, is that right? No, really great. Awesome, great. Thanks, Phil. Uh, please give it up for the human equivalent of a Yankee candle, Brandon Burns. Wow, also with his mute button on. They all do, they all have it on. Uh, our next player thinks every single word to a Red Hot Chili Pepper song is just give it away over and over again. Give it up for Jose Orozco. The poor man's Tom Selleck and the rich man's Geraldo Rivera boo this next player. That's right, it is Robert the Chocolate Bear Hager. Oh, you're oh. It's tradition oh. around here in Fancy Hobo. And now we have three, that's right, three brand new players making their Fancy Hobo debut tonight. Please give it up for our next player. Their goal in life is to fall into a pile of pandas. Give it up for Brennan Dwyer. Woo! Woo! Our next player is a Hallmark character with no Christmas spirit come to life, Gabby Galloway. Hello. Hello, hello. Ah. And finally, our last player for the evening making their debut, a mix of yogurt, used books, and happy sounds. Give it up for Magneto Morgan. Woo hello. Welcome, welcome. Well, we are all met here, so let's get things started with our first game of the night. Our first game is called Expert Challenge, and it is for everyone. The way Expert Challenge works is like 
this. Uh, all, one of our players is going to be, uh, aside from being improvisers, we all happen to be experts on every single topic that there ever was. So we are going to be giving our improvisers a topic, and they are going to be beginning uh, to talk about how how they know everything about this one topic. But when someone disagrees with them, uh, we will uh, hit this little buzzer sound. So you might hear something that sounds a little bit like this. And then uh, we are, uh, we'll switch it over to another expert who will correct that person and carry on with the, uh, with the expert uh, 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 dialogue that is happening here today. So uh, players, your suggestion comes from Lizzie on Instagram. Today we are experts in soup, something that I hate so much, soup. I hate, that's right, I hate every type of soup. Um, all right, so uh, uh, this is the game of expert challenge with the suggestion of soup. We're going to start things off with an expert, and that expert is going to be Jose. Uh, players, are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Then let's play. So everybody thinks that clam chowder is the best kind of soup. And now normally I would agree with them, but there's this whole new kind of soup that I got going on. It's got bats in it. I'm it's so got sorry. I'm so sorry, it. Jose. Brennan disagrees with you, so we're going to her. Yeah, uh, clam chowder is no one's favorite soup. I'm going all in for matzo ball. My grandmother made the best matzo ball soup. She came all the way from Russia. And let me tell you, I, I think Phil disagrees with you, so we're going to him. Hello, I am Brendan's grandmother, and I did not come from Russia. I came from Ukraine. Uh, and yes, my matzo ball soup is phenomenal, but it is very important that just because the Eastern Bloc uh, used to be part of the USSR, uh, it is in fact... No, 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 I'm so sorry. We're going right over to Brandon. Okay, none. you don't have the best matzo ball soup. That's from my grandmother. She grew up in the middle of Bronx, New York. Her matzo ball is so authentic. The matzo balls cry when they enter the broth. That's how accurate her broth is. It's like it's from the uh, land where it came from. Like uh, she pulls the grain from- No, uh, uh, no, Chaco says that that is some fake news. So we're going to Chaco. Matzo balls are incapable of tears. They are the toughest food around. Have you ever seen a matzo ball cry? I know you're lying. I have never seen one cry. I've seen one have severed limbs. No tears. Nope, I'm sorry, Chaco. We're gonna give uh, Gabby the floor. You say it's the toughest food? Well, me, I'm a meatball sub, and I'm the toughest food in the world. I got sauce all over me. I'm sandwich. Who's tougher than me? Prove it, prove it. Why don't you? I don't hear any takers. Uh we we got uh, we've got a few people who disagree with you. Uh, we're gonna go uh, we're gonna go right over to um, to Magneto. Yep, we're going to Magneto. I'd just like to talk about how matzo balls have been for the last five years on the endangered species list, and no one is talking about this. I think that we need to put in laws to try to protect these beautiful creatures. Uh, I mean, liquefying. Them I'm just so sorry, uh, Jose disagrees. So we're going back to Jose. This is actually Jose Orozco live on the scene where the last remaining matzo ball in the world has just given birth to a thousand new little baby matzo balls. They are officially no longer endangered. So whatever that last person said, you can chalk it up to tomfoolery. There's plenty uh, of matzo balls now. Uh, not only tomfoolery, but chicanery. Let's go to Brandon. It's me, the newest matzo ball on the face of the planet. And I just want to say, if you don't eat me, I'll destroy the world with my matzo powers. It's called <laughs> That is matzo our magic. game. Ooh. That's the game right there. Wow, wow. Oh my goodness. Um, I didn't know that I could dislike soup more, but I definitely do after that game. Um, so uh, disagree with me? Well, you can send in your opinions about soup to our Venmo at Fancy Hobo Improv and I'll read them. <laughs> Out loud, that's right. Um, I'll, I'll fight with you on air, sure, why not? Our next game is called Oscar Winning Moment, and this game is for our new players. It's for Brennan, it's for Gabby, and it's for Magneto. So let's get them in here. 
Um, the way Oscar winning moment works is a little bit like this. These players are going to be performing inside of an iconic movie that has never been made. And at any time, I can say Oscar winning moment Gabby or Oscar winning moment Brennan or Oscar winning moment Magneto. And they will have to immediately go into a monologue that would win them an Oscar. We're talking about some hardcore acting skills here. So um, the title of your movie today, players, comes from Melissa on Facebook, and that title is That Was the Past. That Was the Past. So uh, this is the game of Oscar winning moment. Players, are you ready? Yes. yes. Then let's play. I just wish we could forget about it. Melissa, Melissa, you can't keep you can't keep beating yourself up. There's always a silver lining. I see silver everywhere. It's just that my eyes, they hurt so bad. See, an optometrist, this is an opportunity for you. You know what the optometrist did to me. That's why I don't want to go back there. See a different optometrist. Come on. I just fear the trauma. Seeing any optometrist would just send me in such a spiral. The spirals are beautiful things, right? Come on, after every dark cloud, there's a beautiful rainbow, Melissa. That's what I've been telling you all these years. I can't I see, see rainbows. I can only see silver. Gabby, Oscar winning moment. I just, I wanna see trees, you know? I wanna see the green, but I can. Oh, one shade. One beautiful shade, but what is the sunshine without yellow? What is a new baby's laugh without the rosy cheeks you can pinch? I mean, it feels as if my life is over. It feels as if it's never begun. I mean, silver's fine, but what about gold? I'll never get there, I'll never get the gold. My past is holding me back. I mean, I just, I wish I had never gone to that optometrist. And I hate that you sent me. Matt, I just don't think I can ever forgive you. I mean, like all the light has been given out of my life. All the light. All the light, and I mean, I just, I hate a God that put me on this earth without colors. I mean, I knew them once, but that damn optometrist took it away from me. Thank you. Hey, mom, dad. Um, hi, um, I've got something important to tell you. Um, uh, I, I'm a little nervous to tell you. I know you have, um, I know you've always had big hopes for me, but um, I'm scared of disappointing you. I am, um, I've been accepted into optometry school. Oh, that's I mean, fantastic. Oh God, God, no. I wanted you to be the president. Thanks dad. Sorry, mom. I am. Um, <laughs> Melissa. I'm not sure if I can see you anymore. Melissa, our child has a dream and we need to support that. Magneto, Oscar winning moment. This is a beautiful moment, the dawn of something new. Yes, you can only see silver, but when I was younger, I remember that, that beautiful day where I tripped and I lost one of my eyes to a rabbit dog. But let me tell you something. When I went to the doctor and he looked at me, I felt a difference because I knew that this was not the end. This was a change, a change of perspective, an opportunity for me to see everything in a new light from a new place. And you have this opportunity with our beautiful child, Lisa, who has just had the most amazing experience. 
Thank you. No. Thank you. Well, um, I guess this means I'll be um, moving out of the house and uh, so I guess this is goodbye. Brennan, Oscar winning moment. I always knew this day would come, but I didn't think it would be so soon when I would have to say goodbye to my parents, never knowing if I would see them again, never knowing if they would see me again because their vision is rapidly declining. And unless I can save them, they will never see again. And there's so much in this world to see. I want you to be able to see the dominoes on people when you're in your old folks home and you're gonna beat everyone else. I want that for you, Mom. How much you've ever seen, even if that means you'll never see your sweet little Clementine again. Thank you. You'll still call, though. And that's our game. That is the game scene. Wow. Now, anytime I will have to go to the optometrist, that's that's all I'm going to think about is like this horrible drama that's happening, uh, unfolding. She like puffs air into my eye. Just a single tear comes from hers. Um, all right. Our next game is called, uh, before we get to our next game, we want to remind you that if you are just tuning in to our show right now, you can make donations to make sure that more improv shows come directly to you. That's right, we are, uh, since we're not in a space, we are taking donations so you can Venmo those donations. It can be a dollar, it can be $500. Please let it be $500, but it can also be a dollar. Uh, you can send those into at Fancy Hobo Improv. It's right there on the bottom corner of your screen. Anytime you send a donation in, our little Fancy Hobo logo will appear and they will tip its cap to you. Um, and, uh, and I will be, happy. Uh, so let's get moving on right now. Oh, uh, just also another quick reminder that you can put a suggestion in for any noun into the, uh, into the chat, and uh, we, are, we are taking suggestions for the very end of our show. Our next game is called Advice Panel. Advice Panel is for Brandon, for Jose, for Magneto, and it is for Chaco. Uh, the way this game works is that Jose is hosting an um, uh, an advice panel, uh, and he uh, has his own special little show, and he will be uh, inviting some some panelists over, and they were going to be answering your advice questions. We got advice, life advice questions from our audience this week, so let's see here. Um, uh, they will be played by other things. I think that's all we need to get this game started. Players, are you ready? Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Then yes. play. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Besos from Baja, the number one talk show in Baja, California. I am your host, of course, Sonny Rodriguez. And with me tonight, I have three of the spiciest panelists that will help you get to the bottom of your problems and questions. Now, introducing panelist number one. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think it's Tom. I, I believe I'm from Central Valley, California. I, I got here on a bus and I'm just trying to find my way around. So if you know where a local station is, just point me out. All right, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, panelist number two, introduce your spicy self. The name's Gus. I'm a fisherman. Very simple, to the point. I like it, Gus. I like my spice, simple. All right, panelist number three, introduce yourself, please. Matthias Grimwood, psychic PI. There's no problem that I can't see. 
Matthias, a private eye. You know, most people are having a lot of problems with law enforcement right now. But me, I say, live and let live, am I right? Something that uh, law enforcement could possibly uh, take some advice from. Now then, our first question for the evening, please. Uh, hi, my name is Chewy the Golden Puppy, and um, I'm fresh 12 months old. And I was just wondering, like, how do I um, deal with neighbors who park like jerks? Yes, jerky neighbors. This is a problem that befalls all of us. Now let's see what our panelists have to say about that. Panelist oh. number one, your answer, oh. please. Oh, big boppity, I good girl, yeah. I don't know, I guess I would assume the best course of action would be like a communication. Maybe you write a kind note to point someone in the right direction of just where to be a better person. But you wanna make sure you tell them in clear sentences or you could point them in a place where they ought not to go. I would sure hope not a so. Oh yes, clear, concise sentences with good punctuation. The difference between helping your Jack off a horse and helping your uncle Jack off a horse. Now, panelist number two. Kid, what you need is to get away. Isolation is the best band-aid for the soul. You can forget, and maybe someday you can forgive yourself. Oh, yes. Leave. Leave the problem behind. No neighbors, no jerky problem. A very effective solution. Now, Hannes number three, your thoughts. You know, I can, I can read into these neighbors' problems and... You know, they're living a loveless marriage, so you have to show them some sympathy. Remember, oh. everyone has problems that you're not seeing, but I do. Incredible. Our local private investigator is also a psychic private investigator, a, a, a PPI, if you will. Incredible. A PPI with PSI. Beautiful. Now, on to our next question. Uh, hey guys, it's me, Ozzy from Los Angeles. Uh, thanks for taking my, my question. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm super sad right now. I recently had my heart ripped out of my chest and stomped on by a lady. Uh, and I just wanted to know, uh, how can I get over this breakup so I can stop being dead inside? Uh, thanks. Ah, uh, yes, of course. The pain of heartbreak. Worse than a stub toe, worse than a toothache. Nothing equals it. Panelist number one, your thoughts on this horrendous, horrendous situation. Oh, a big bang boom, Billy Porter, I don't know. Heartache is one of those things I've never quite understood because the heart is the most complicated muscle you'll ever have. So I would have to say the best thing that you should do is just recognize that love comes in waves. And if it's meant to be, then love will find itself again. But just trust that you're going to be okay if you find hope in the world around you. But best goo, I don't really know about it. Ah, such brilliant and clear advice from our beautiful specimen of an astronaut here. I hope that zero gravity is treating you well, Gus. Now then, right. panelist number two, your suggestion, please. You won't get over it. More of a stern, ominous warning than advice, but we'll take it. It was spicy all the same. All right, panelist number three, please. Your words. Ah, uh, yes, I can, I can see into, into these problems as well. I can, I can see into everything, and I, I can see that her heart has been broken too. And it's just been a vicious cycle, a vicious cycle. And you know what? It's up to you to break it. You have to find love and don't let your heartache stop you from doing that. Don't let it sabotage your life. I can see it happening if you do. You heard it from our psychic detective yourselves. Just stop feeling it. Stop feeling those feelings and break the wheel. Break it for all of us. Beautiful. Now, our next question, please. Hey, um, my name is Hasty, and I think my ex-boyfriend was 
actually just on the show, but I have an unrelated question. I just want to know, how do I stop hating males? Hating males. A difficult, difficult thing to tackle in this day and age, for sure. Panelist number one, please regale us with your beautiful, beautiful insights. I don't really think that men are anything special, but hate is one of the unforgivable sins that your heart must forever replenish in this thing called life. So if you don't want to hate, I think that you just have to believe that if you view people with possibility, that hate will eventually leave and be replaced with compassion. Even though, again, I have to be honest, men kind of suck. Beautiful, beautiful words. I hope that spinning isn't going to make you puke soon. Now then, panelist number two, please, your advice. Why are all these questions about relationships? I don't understand. Look, Hasty, men are poison. And the sooner that you can come to grips with that, the sooner you can move on and find something else to pour what's left of your soul into. God. Let go of the poison of men. Find a new poison to give yourself to. Advice from a sad, hurt, sad individual. <laughs> Panelist number three, your words, please. Uh, yes, this is, this is a tough one. I, you know, gotta really search through the, through the ethereal, Oh, 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 I can't. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, ah. Detective, I think, ah, I think your brainwaves have reached me. Ah, please stop, detective, I can't quite, ah, ow. Oh, oh, oh God. I think I'm okay. Are the other panelists all right? I, ah, ow. Deborah. Gus, you didn't right. get me up in space. Oh, and God, that is I'm... our game. <laughs> that is the game. Wow, wow. You know, if I learned one lesson from that is that men are poison. Uh, so that's good advice right there. I mean, you can't ask for more than that. So our next game coming up is called Dating Game. That's right. Uh, this game is also for Jose and Chaco and Phil and Brandon. Uh, we got all four of these coming on in here. Yes. So the way dating game works is it goes like this. Uh, it is a game done in the style of those old dating games. Uh, uh, Phil is going to be our lucky bachelor and um, he is going to be looking for love. The only problem is, is that he has no idea who his contestants are and he's gonna have to guess. Uh, so Phil, uh, I'm gonna give them their suggestions now. I need you to turn off your volume, walk away, make sure that I can't hear you at all. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You're a terrible human being. All right, great. He can't hear me. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to test it number one. That's going to be you, Chaco. Uh, you are going to be playing Captain Crunch, and that comes from Joey on Instagram. And then we have Jose. Jose, you are going to be playing Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc, and that comes from Peter on Instagram. And finally, Brandon, you're, uh, it also, this also comes from Peter on Instagram. You're gonna be playing Mary Poppins. Uh, Mary Poppins, all right, friends, uh, sound good? So we're gonna get Phil back in here by waving our arms wildly like a wacky inflatable arm flailing tube man, but he hasn't seen us at all. There he is, finally. Phil, did you hear any of what we just said? Yeah. Really good, it worked, it worked really well. All right, players, this is the game of dating game. Players, are you ready? Yes. 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 Then let's play. Hi everyone, my name's Todd. Um, uh, I'm really into uh, LARPing, which is a uh, live action role playing for those of you that don't know. Um, so you can also refer to me as uh, the King Wizard Glomax of Westervale. Uh, either one, Todd or Glomax, either, either one. Um, but obviously I'm here looking for love um, because my elven princess who I'm in love with um, uh, has uh, a boyfriend in that stupid paladin Brock. 
Um, but obviously, you know what, I'm, I'm ready for something new. So I, I'm excited to meet you all. And I've, I've got some questions and hopefully we'll, we'll find some, 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 some love. Um, okay, so uh, question number one uh, for bachelor number one, uh, what spell would you cast to capture my heart? What spell would I cast to capture your heart? Well, you know, I, I don't believe much. Well, there's really only one spe spell I believe in, and that's the spell of the sea. You know, well, and the spell of a good breakfast. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, really get you. Oh, okay, that's great. Good. Yes, the sea is magical, and I do enjoy a good breakfast. So thank you, Bachelor number one. Uh, bachelor number two, same question. What spell would you cast on me that win my heart? The only spell that matters, the spell of God. I would invoke him and his power in order to capture your heart, the same way I would invoke his power to capture and defeat my enemies on the battlefield, much like your LARP field. Great, uh, God is love, so a love spark from God is, is probably gonna be something cool. I don't know how he feels about wizard kings, but we'll, we'll figure it out together, I guess. Uh, bachelor number three, same question. What spell would you cast to win over my heart? Hmm, my goodness. Spell casting? I don't want to use any silly magic to win your heart, my dear boy. I would simply use a, a nice little spoonful of joy and a spoonful of sugar by chance to get your heart moving. Skip on down the road, why don't you? Hmm? Hmm. Oh, you seem very proper, like, like a lady I grew up with, but help me take my medicine. She was really cool. Uh, okay, okay, uh, second question for everyone. Uh, if we were to date, okay, and a big muscly guy wearing lots and lots of armor came up and tried to take you away from me, uh, how would you tell him to buzz off? Bachelor number two, I want to start with you this time to mix it up. I would take my blade and sink it into this monster's chest. For how could he dare think that he could ever separate me from my love? No brute force, no force on this earth could ever separate me from what I love. And if that is you, then he would taste cold steel. That is very aggressive, and I think it would fit in very well on the LARP field, except maybe instead of steel to go with like a duct taped pad. But other than that, Really great answer, Bachelor number two, thanks. Uh, bachelor number three, same question. How would you reject a muscle-bound armored butthole that tried to take you from me? Hmm, a good talking to, I do say, think would cause that problem to go away quite, quite well. I don't quite worry about those silly, silly men with their big words and big muscles. A simple talking to in my mind will get any situation solved quite well. Great. Uh, Using words is also a great part of diplomacy and anything that a wizard queen should be able to do. So I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, bachelor number one, same question. Muscle-bound guy, try to take you away. What do you do? Well, I would try to break him, and that would be by simply sticking to the roof of his mouth in a very annoying fashion. Great. I'm not, sure how, I'm not sure how I feel about you being in his mouth, but we can work with that. Uh, you lover of the sea and breakfast and mouth sticking. All right, one last question. Uh, if you were to become the wizard queen of Westervale, right, what would you do to ensure that our people love us? Let's start with bachelor number three this time. Well, love us, I think, is the easiest thing. A little bit of a dance by chance, a little step in time will get them fitting right in place and we'll simply rule as we see fit with a gentle but firm hand, you and I. No silliness needed. That is such a great answer. I can just imagine them being in awe of your magic flying on the umbrella. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> uh, bachelor number one, same question. Uh, what would you do as the, as the wizard queen of Westervale to make our people love us? Well, that would be higher than the title I own now. But, well, to make people love me, I would simply add berries to what I do now. Oh, that sounds... Distinct 
colors. That sounds very crunchy. Uh, awesome. Those seem like some crunchy berries you would have. Uh, bachelor number two, let's end this with the same question. What would you do to make these folks fall in love with us is my wizard queen. In order to make sure that the people love us, we must make sure that they have a love for God. For only then can they truly experience true love. And by giving them this gift, we will ensure that they will definitely love us and that the common folk will never, never, ever rebel and bring out guillotines and chop people's heads off and call for rebellion and for, and for the destruction of the higher class or anything like that. Great. Uh, you, yeah, you sound like you have experience with this, almost like, a, uh, like you want people to eat cake and stuff. Uh, great. Uh, I'm so happy with all of you, but all right, it's time to make a decision and I can't, I can't put it off any longer. You all seem really, really great. Okay, but I can only take one of you. Um, so uh, bachelor number one, Captain Crunch. I'm <laughs> sorry, I don't, I don't think it's gonna work out. Uh, I need someone a little more magical and I don't really need a Navy, so sorry. Uh, bachelor number two, you're, French royalty, but you also like stabbing people and you love God. So uh, you're probably not Marie Antoinette because you're probably uh, 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 Joan of Arc. Oh, yes. Although I am sad that I do not get to date you now. Yes, no, too intense for me. I'm sorry. But of course, I think it fits perfectly that the Wizard Queen of Westervale should be my only true love that I've had since I was just a boy, Mary Poppins, will you be my wizard queen? Chim Chimuri, indeed, my boy. And that is our game. That is the game. <laughs> wow, Phil, well done. Well done. I you really didn't think you were gonna get Joan of Arc at all, but like nailed it. Wow, just clutch, very nice. To all be right. fair, Jose's face when I said eat cake let me know that that was the wrong tag. <laughs> Good. Our next game is called Scene from a Tweet. Uh, Phil and Chaco, why don't you stay here where you are because you are in this next game and we'll, we'll have you joined by Brennan. Um, all right, so uh, these players are going to be doing a scene based off of a tweet. Uh, we asked Twitter this week to tag us in their favorite tweet, and that is going to be the suggestion for the scene. So the tweet is, I will read it, um, and that'll be your suggestion, folks. How do men find pillows that are flat? I have never seen flat, lifeless pillows being sold, and yet men always own them. Uh, that is the tweet, and that comes from uh, Jeanette on Twitter. Thank you for tagging us in that. That is your suggestion. Flat pillows um, and, and, and men having them. Players, are you ready? Yes. Then let's play. This is the last time that I'm going to tolerate this from you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, it's just, it's, oh, it's, uh, oh, yeah, I, you know, love is, I, things cost money, and, you know, uh, I'll, I, uh, I, I love you. Oh, no, okay, what did I just say? There's no more of that, okay? No more. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're... yeah. What? I. The key. Sorry. The key? Yeah, you did bring the key. Yeah, I got it. Great. Um, well, I guess there's nothing left to say then. On my part, I, I'm done. <sighs> if you had anything you needed to say. Well, I, 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 I have been trying to get something to say and now I'm going to say it. Okay, you know, if you had something to say, you should have said it 10 minutes ago. Hey, Lucy, you ready to go? Yeah. Barnaby. Oh, you're still, still, I thought maybe this would be done by now. Yeah. Uh, you're ready. 
Ready to move on to your uh, newer, fluffier man. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you, you, confidence, confidence, confidence. You know what? You can't do that in front of me. You know, like, you could do it away from me. We, we, we're done now. I understand that. You, you don't love me anymore. I understand that. But please don't do that in front of me. I still have feelings. Um, I, I, I actually have made it very clear that I don't want to hear about your feelings anymore, okay? If you talk about your feelings one more time, I might explode. I, my, listen, Barnaby likes me the way that I am, cold hearted and boring. Yeah, super into that. Thanks, sweetie. Yeah. Well, you know, Bartleby looks like a fool. <laughs> you know what? It's not my, not my, you know, this isn't my business, but you, you got to let go, man. Okay. You can't, you can't just keep holding on. She's ready for something new. So just get over it. You want to fight? You want to fight? You want to fight? I, I'm feeling it. You know what? I'm feeling the juice now. I'm feeling the confidence. I'm going to take you, man. You want to get into a Let's physical altercation it. with me in yeah. front of my new lady? Yeah, I'm in front of my old lady. Why would I lower myself I'll to that? Like, yeah. You know, you know what'll what'll really what'll make it a real fight? Pillows. <laughs> oh my god. Lucy, sweetie, you, you think I'm joking? I love you, but I think we should uh, go yeah, bro. before I pull out my Tempur Pedic and wallop this dude. Yeah, um, pillows are for one thing and one thing only. Um, Breath play. Into repurposing household items, you know. So let's let's get yeah. out. Came here to win you back. Now I came here to. You know, I'm not gonna kick your ass, Bartleby. Pebble time. Such impotent rage. It's a. Uh, it's, it's frankly, it's a, uh, it's annoying. I um. I'm embarrassed for you. Okay, well, um, Barnaby, should we uh, take a stroll by the, by the lakeside and talk about our five-year plan? Oh my God, that sounds so cold-hearted and amazing. And that's the scene, scene, game scene. Wow, wow. Uh, impotent Rage uh, is the uh, <laughs> um, title of a book. It's got to be a title of some book somewhere. Um, all right, our next game is called Genre Replay. It is for Gabby, it is for Jose, and it is for Brandon. Uh, the way Genre Replay works is like this. Our players are going to do a scene, a short scene, and then we are going to see that same scene done in two different genres, a genre of television and a genre of film. Uh, but we need to see that first scene first, and that scene suggestion is going to be based off of uh, a suggestion by Lars on Facebook. He gave us the suggestion of Sprocket. Sprocket. So players take that as you will, because many of you look confused. Um, all right, players. Players, you ready? Yes. yes. Then let's do this. My God! Don't touch it! But it's so incredible. I I want to touch it just once. Move that finger away before I bite it off. Okay, what about this? I'll finger? bite it off! Okay, okay, I won't touch it, but man, oh man, is it incredible. What are you gonna do with it? It's my secret sprocket, my friend. Oh, yes. a secret sprocket, yes. huh? Yes. I know all about those. I know, they were so, so rare, but yes, here I am, with the biggest sprocket in the land. Yeah, I've never seen one that big before, but, but what? What are you gonna do with it? Well, lean in really close and I'll tell you. Closer, 
closer. I'm gonna give it. Copy, copy. Um, he's gonna give it to the French. So, what was that? I, I didn't say that? anything. Uh, don't no. mind me. I'm just over here. I'm just over here doing stuff. It's okay. I'm I'm yeah. the new guy. Yeah. Oh, you're David. Oh, David. 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 Oh, yeah. David. Hey. We have heard such good things about you. Yeah. 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 I'm not? happy for my birthday. Oh, oh yeah. We are First happy to here. have you. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool setup we got going over here with the the, the new thing. Yeah, oh, it's, it's his so new nice. secret sprocket. It's my secret sprocket. It's my secret oh, sprocket, yeah, but don't it's... tell anyone. It's a shush shush thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of it's course It's the biggest not. one in the world. Yeah. Uh -huh. Why are you raising your shirt so aggressively? It's hot. It is a little hot in here. I was going to say something, but I wasn't sure. Well, I have to keep it hot or else the sprocket would explode if it goes even one degree down. This whole place would go kablamo. Oh. Oh. Yes. Okay, well, <laughs> can't have that. No, you cannot. I'm sorry. What, what was that? What was that? Oh, I said, oh, oh, it's a cold, you know? Oh, no. A cold. You, you, you can't be in here then. What? Uh -huh. This is This is a completely decontaminated work environment. You can't be in here with a cold. If you bring in give one cold. of the machines a virus. My God, my God. Everyone run. We have to run. Put in your scuba gear. Put in your scuba gear. All right, We're scene. going down. We're going down, ladies and gentlemen. In scene. All right, so we're going to see that same scene done in the style of a, of a TV soap opera, TV soap opera that comes from Peter. Players, are you ready? Yes. yes. Then do it. Don't touch it. But, but it's the, it's the greatest thing I've ever seen. I know. I, I must touch it. You can't. Oh, but I, I will, must. How about with this finger? I will chop that finger off. Oh, all right. You swine. You're always so cruel. I know, but I have but to I must be. admit, it is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Thank what you. is it? It's my lover, Claude. It's his frozen body. Oh my God. Yes. It's incredible. Did you I see? know. And wow, that's the biggest one I've ever seen. I know. It was so difficult to freeze, I almost ran out of ice. Did you hear that? Did Who? Who's that? I, I didn't say a thing. But I heard a it, voice. It must have been you. It wasn't me, it must have been you. It wasn't me. Wait. Who are you? Uh, Is that? Yes, your mother-in-law. <gasps> Charlotte the Fourth. Yes. I thought we did away with you with that really dramatic cliffhanger back in like four years ago. Yeah, you fell off that cliff. Yes. That's what you thought. It was all a decoy, but I'm just here for family matters. Family oh. matters? Right. Yes. What are you doing? My son in law's doing, you know. Oh. Your son in law, Your son in law, you say? Yes. Well, if you want to see him, why don't you look where you're looking at? Oh my God. Oh, jeez. It's but me. if you're the son-in-law, then who's frozen? It's Wait a minute. also the son-in-law. All right, scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. We are going to see this scene done in one more genre, a genre of film uh, that comes from Will on Instagram, and that genre is a heist movie. <laughs> That's right. All right. Players, are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Thing play. Wait, don't touch it. Oh man, but I gotta touch it. I know, I know you gotta touch, but you can't touch it, all right? It's all right, I'm fingers. gonna touch it, but just with one finger right here. No, if you touch it with one finger, the whole place is gonna light up with lights. You gotta be all careful. right, then I'll touch it with two fingers right here. Well, if you touch it with two fingers, the whole place is gonna light up with double lights. You gotta be careful. All right, then how am I supposed away? to get this thing? How am I supposed to get this thing without touching it, huh? We're gonna we're gonna walk it through slow like. We're gonna walk it through real slow like. Right. You know oh, that? Oh. You know that tool I gave you? That special little tool? 
Oh, yeah, I got the tool right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you're going to pull that out. Mm -hmm. There you go. Nice little typey yep. type. What you're going to do, you're going to take it, draw three circles in an aggressive line. All right, and then two, and then mm -hmm. three. Oh, man, I'm in. There you go. Oh, See what I'm saying? If you don't touch it, this is it, the greatest aggressive. score I've ever seen. I know. 43 pogs just sitting there for us to take. Oh, man, what are we going to do with all these pogs? Must we hacked into their mainframe? We got them. Hello? Hey, did, did you say something? Because I didn't say nothing. No, I didn't say anything. Is there someone else on this line? Hey, who is that? Uh, don't mind me. I'm just a uh, janitor. Oh, it's just the janitor. He's just on the line. Oh. Oh, you yeah. know what? I think this is the janitor we talked to last week. Is this Glenn the janitor? Hey, it's Glenn. Glenn, you old Glenn. son of a bitch. What are you doing? Eh? You old so and so. I don't know. I just want to say hi. Hey, 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 Glenn. All right. Hey, cards on the table. We're taking this this stash of pogs over here. All right. You want in? Oh, do I want in? I mean, we can cut you like a couple of pogs. We want a couple of pogs. We can cut you in, Glenn. Yeah, You're a cool guy. Yeah. I'd love to be cut in, people cutting me in. Uh, wait. Me. Wait, Glenn. I heard you mumble off 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 your microphone there. What was is someone with you? Yeah, you or? made like a suspicious other sound. Like everything yeah, cool? Was that? We all good? I was uh, telling a kid to get out of the bathroom. You hey, know, that sounds, stuff. that sounds like something a spy would say. Yeah. All right, that's it. I bet, I bet he found a spy. You got, you know what you got to do? You're going to have to go kill that kid. That I'm going to go kill about. Glenn. I'm coming for you, Glenn. Get We're going to save you, Get Glenn. Dead. Thank Wait, you. And those pogs, you. you ain't getting them anymore. Damn, with the kids nope. Dead. nope. The kid's nope. dead too. Yeah, okay. everyone's like, gonna. That's the game. That's our game. That is our game. Uh, you know, when in doubt, shoot the spy and his kid. That was the lesson that I learned there. Um, and if you want to learn more important lessons like that, uh, you can help us out by making a donation to Fancy Hobo Improv. That's right. You can head over to Venmo and Venmo those donations in uh, to at Fancy Hobo Improv. It's right there on the corner of your screen. And you can be awesome like Jesse or Stacy or Electra, who have all donated so far to us tonight. Again, you can donate a dollar. You can donate $135 million. And if you would do that, then I mean, you'd be awesome. Um, and you know what? You can be on the show if you donate that much money. That's right. Uh, anytime you make a donation to us uh, on the bottom corner of your screen, our Fancy Hobo logo will appear and it will tip its little cap to you. Thank you again so much for supporting us. We really, really appreciate it. All right, let's move on to our next game. Our next game is a brand new game. Yes, it is for Brennan, Brandon, Magneto, and Phil. This game is called The Morning Show. Now, the way the morning show works is that Brennan and Brandon are going to be hosting a morning show. And uh, their guests on that morning show is going to be Magneto and Phil. But Magneto and Phil are not going to be any regular guests. We have gotten special suggestions for them. So, uh, Magneto, you uh, are going, you have found the cure for stupidity. You have found the cure for stupidity. That is your suggestion. That comes from Heidi on Facebook. And for Phil, Phil, uh, uh, this suggestion comes very special from Jonathan on Facebook. You are a burlesque dancer. So um, play. this is the game of the morning show uh, hosted by Brandon and Brandon. Players, are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Then play. Yes. <laughs> it is 7.15 local time, and I am John Anderson, formerly John Smith, <laughs> here with my lovely co-host. Say hi. Hi, I'm Marsha Brady. Not that Marsha Brady, but uh, the other Marsha Brady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gosh, it is so good to see you, Marsha. How was your weekend? Oh, it was a great weekend. I just tanned. Oh, you just tan? My gosh. And boy, your skin does not even show a hint of it. Oh, <laughs> you're just the sweetest. How was yours? Oh, gosh. Let me tell you, it was terrible. Got fired some divorce papers, and I am fully alone with all of the kids. <laughs> oh. It's Buenos Noches. Uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh wow 
Oh, that was amazing. Well, I hear we have some lovely guests. Why don't you introduce the first one there? Yeah, great, thanks. Um, oh, no, come on in, come on in to our first guest, yeah. Yeah, water's fine. <laughs> nice to have you. Yeah. Good to be here, my schedule is very full right now. Tell us a little bit about why. <laughs> yeah, what's going on there, friend? Well, I'm coming to you live from the bedroom of my personal laboratory. My name is Timothy A. Todrick, and I have the next thing for you to purchase. Oh my That's God. right. I love buying things. Uh, money is no object. <laughs> That's right. All you apes watching, listen with your brains now because they're about to get bigger. Ooh. I have here miracle water, the cure for all the dumb. All the oh. dumb goes goodbye. It goes kablam with just a few sips of this every three hours. Wow. Not only $55.99, it's a steal. I know a certain <laughs> ex that might be able to use some of that if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your fucking mouth, Marcia. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. God damn it. <laughs> Well, really, a steal. <laughs> mm -hmm. So tell us, if you're so smart, how'd you think of that idea? Because I'm smart. Wow. <laughs> a little mega mind over there, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. And uh, what, do you, what do you hope to uh, invent next? Yeah. Oh, go. Wow. Wow. I'm done. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> what I a segment. Marcia, you really chose a great guest, didn't you? He had a lot to give. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh. Next, um, okay, thanks for joining <sighs> us. Maybe next time when you uh, make your next potion to solve uh, heartbreak, we'll have you on again. <laughs> oh, Marcia, you little bitch. God, I love you. Well, don't you worry. I got a guess it'll top anything you want to bring in. This little, little trickster has the moves that will stop your heart right away as they just get punched deep. It's a silly little burlesque dancer. Bring them on in. Come on, come on. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. Mm. Uh, Franklin McGill here, uh, the world's foremost male burlesque dancer. Franklin, it is such a pleasure to have you on. I have been watching your material for years now. Years. <laughs> yeah, mm. thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, give a shout out to the channel if you can. Uh, the Art of Burlesque, you see, is all about the tease, right? Like, am I going to show you my nipple right now? Oh, I don't that's not allowed on. That's actually, you can't do that. Please don't. I'm you know man. what? I can show as many nipples as I want. It's, it's true. It's happen. true. Oh, it's out right now, but it's off camera, so you can't oh, see it. You sneaky little devil, you. <laughs> now, tell us, is this correct? You were just invited to perform for the, for the United Kingdom's consulate in America this weekend? Oh, that's right. The Brits love themselves a bit of a tea. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you are so much funnier than Marsha will ever be or could ever hope to be. My gosh. Oh. Tea, rumpets, and a little peak of areola. What? That's what the Brits enjoy. I was thinking your marriage could have used some of that. <laughs> oh, you mother... God, I love our time together. I really, really do. <laughs> oh, Little Franklin well, McGill I'm... spice of any marriage, I'll tell you that much. If you need some extra bedroom spice, I do private shows. Hey, I might not be looking for some bedroom spice with her, but I might be looking for some by myself. If you catch my drift, a oh, wink, wink, a oh, wink, wink. <laughs> oh. Or right. by himself. I see. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, you have fun with those Brits and let it be quite a saucy time. <laughs> hey, put that away there. Put it away. No, All right. Ah. <laughs> ah. Oh. <laughs> oh. If you want to see more, make sure you check out my YouTube page and my website, franklinmcgillshowsareolas.com. Oh, uh, well, again, Franklin, thank you so much for coming on, and hopefully we'll have you on again soon, all right? And that is our game. That is the game. Dear God. Oh, uh, whoo. That was uh, more areola than I think any of us were expecting to experience today. I, I, it definitely was more than I was expecting. My God, <laughs> that's not usually what burlesque what happens in burlesque, but hey. Don't you tell me what burlesque is about. All right, I'm sorry, we're the expert. That's right, that's right. All right, our next game is called In a Blank with a Blank. It is for Gabby and it is for Jose. Let's get them in here. They are gonna be doing a scene based off of just those suggestions, the filling in those two blanks. So our suggestions came from Jesse on Instagram. Uh, players, your suggestion is in a boat with a goat. Uh, cool, sounds good? Yeah. All right, players. Uh, then whenever you're ready. Oh, man. I can't believe you ate it. I know, but it was really, really good. <laughs> it was made of wood. Yeah, no, no, no. It's like chipmunk time. <laughs> oh, but now we don't have an oar. How are we going to get it back? Um, handsies? Handsies? Yeah, I got handsies. What are we going to do with those two club things you call feet um paddlesies do paddlesies do the oh ocean. paddlesies paddlesies would have been good if we had an oar but you ate the oar now i've got handsies but you got hoofsies hoofsies aren't good for paddlesies yeah yeah um we could just hang out here i'm having a good time oh my gosh the sun is going down we have to get back to land now yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when they said that I had a date with the smartest goat in the world, I thought, you know, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be great. New experience, you know, got to keep myself open to new experiences, but uh, this is I rough. Mean, I'm flattered that they called me the smartest goat in the world. I mean, you have to still think that, right? <laughs> well, of course. I mean, yeah, you're, you're, you know, we had a great conversation this whole time, you know. And, and I do enjoy your insight, and, and you, you, you made me laugh a few times. Those jokes are pretty good, but, but I can't believe you ate the oar! So, Mark, let's just stay here. I mean, I enjoy you, you enjoy me. Let's just be on this boat forever. We can't be on this boat forever. We have to get back. I don't want to die out at sea. My grandfather died at sea, and my father died at sea. I have to break the curse. This is a lot of trauma for the first date, but it's okay. I'll give you a pass because you're cute. You, 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 give, you give me a pass. Yeah. You, yeah. Because you're, you're cute. Giving, you're giving me the pass because I'm cute is what you're trying to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got to think of something. I got to think of something. Um, oh, okay. I got some driftwood here. Okay. Okay. Pull that up, and and then and then I can and then I can paddle these us with this driftwood. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, okay, okay. So you get one end, and we'll just paddle it and paddle and paddle. Okay, we're making some headroom. Here we go. All right. This All right. is a good bonding experience for us. Yeah, I yeah, this like is great. We'll yeah, this is great. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, and there we go. I oh. just doing things with you, you know. Hi. I broke my end. <laughs> I, I, I mean, broke my end of the- eat, right? I'm hungry. Yeah, sure, go, go right ahead. <laughs> just, just eat it. Oh, <laughs> Shiva above. Oh, great glorious Shiva. Please give me the strength to not eat this goat right now. Oh. Babe. What? Did you just say what I thought you said? Well, well, that wow. depends. What did what did what did you think I said? Wow, I'm talking about forever. I'm talking about like telling the story to our kids, and you want to eat me? Well, how? 
How do you expect me to survive this? That's it. I'll eat you first. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, That's no, 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 no. That's how this relationship works. No, I said eat first. So I'm going to eat you no, first. No, I have the power dynamic here. You see these? I don't think you want to take them on. And that is the game. That is our game. No one wants to take on goat hooves. Nobody. <laughs> um, all right. Our next game, we are winding down to our last few games of our show. Our next game is called Film Dub. Film Dub is for Chaco, Phil, and it's for Brennan. Uh, the way Film Dub works uh, is we will be showing you an old film, and our players will have to dub over that film. So, um, uh, players, the film that we have for you today is, that's right, what is it called? It's called The Amazing Mr. X. The Amazing Mr. X. Um, and uh, that's the film that you'll be dubbing over players. Are you ready? Yes. This is the game of film dub. Play. You two are my very favorite people in the world, and I want you to know that I love you both dearly. Well, you know, that's something you say all the time, but I still don't believe you. Yes, well, it's true, and I want you to know that I have lots of money. <laughs> that's, that's very exciting. Um... Yes. Well, well, I can make it appear yes. in thin air. Wow. You see, I am a man of means, and that means that my love for the both of you is like this I... cigar. I can flip it. I can do things with my fingers that you couldn't imagine. Uh, honey, you see what he's doing there? Ah, uh, well, see, that's what I believe love is. I believe love is this. Love is a beautiful drawing of magic and pony and unicorns. <laughs> uh, you're right. I'll put this away and we can see some magic right now. <laughs> Listen, the bridge here is like a heart. <laughs> Delicious. I eat your heart. <gasps> that is love. Now let's see, heart eating contract. Ah uh, yes, I ate this man's heart at sea last month. I loved him very dearly as well. Is that where you got all the money? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Why didn't you tell us how you got the money? Uh, I'm very- I can, yes, I took it from his body after I ate his heart. Uh, and as you can see, I'm flipping one of the coins I took from him in my fingers now. Could you do a magic trick with this? Hey, maybe I could. Maybe you can do a magic trick with all of it. Mm. And that is the game. That is our game. Wow. Uh, my goodness. I learned so much about magic. I learned so much about so many different uh, things today. Uh, let's move on to our one-liners. Our one-liners are for everyone. Let's get everybody on in here. The game we're gonna be playing today is called Terms of Endearment. The way Terms of Endearment works is that uh, we are all have cute little pet names for our significant other. Um, and, uh, and we got those from you. So we'll be taking a couple suggestions from our chat. Uh, uh, so you can keep putting them in there if you want to. Um, and we're gonna compare our sweet significant other and it kind of explain why they have those cute pet names. Uh, so this is Terms of Endearment. Let us go with a suggestion that comes from Grace on our YouTube chat, uh, Pool Boy. Pool Boy, I call my baby Pool Boy. Players, are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, then let's do this. All right, Brandon. I call my baby pool boy because I love it when he goes to my deep end. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Jose. I call my baby pool boy because I could play with his noodle all day. <laughs> Phil. I call my baby pool boy because she cleans the fungus off my sides. Oh, Gabby. I call my baby pool boy because I'm cheating on my husband with him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are moving on to our next suggestion. I call my baby, um, uh, oh goodness. I call my baby macadamia. That comes from Lars on Facebook. I call my baby macadamia. Uh, uh, Jose. I call my baby macadamia because I've got expensive tastes. Brennan. 
I call my baby macadamia because he makes me a little nutty for him. <laughs> uh, Chaco. I call my baby macadamia because at this point I'm too afraid to ask where she came from. <laughs> Magneto. I call my baby macadamia because he's my little snack. Bill. I call my baby macadamia because she's got a lot of fat, but it's the good fat, you know? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on to our next suggestion. Our next suggestion comes from Jamie on Facebook. Ice pick. Ice pick. I call my baby ice pick. Uh, Brandon. I call my baby ice pick because she is untraceable. Uh, Magneto. I call my baby Icewick because he takes me to greater heights. Shaco. I call my baby Icepick perfectly capable of murder. That's right. All right, let's move on to our very, uh, one of our last suggestions of the night. I call my baby Madness. Madness comes from Rob on our YouTube chat. <laughs> uh, uh, Brandon, sorry. <laughs> I, I call my baby Madness, because Madness rhymes with sadness, and God, am I alone when I'm with her. Mm -hmm. Gabby. I call my baby Madness because he lives inside my head. <laughs> Jocko. I call my baby Madness because there's a mountain. <laughs> You're right. Magneto. Oh, my baby madness, because he's wrapped around my monkey's left thigh. <laughs> Jose. I call my baby madness, because it's really hard for me to pronounce Amanda sometimes. <laughs> Bill. I call my baby madness, because she whispers for me to murder people in my ear. Jesus Christ. Um, all right, uh, our, our very last suggestion comes from Electra on our YouTube chat. Mustache, I'm gonna take mustache. I call my baby mustache. Jose. I call my baby mustache because I like the way she feels on my upper lip. Good, Brandon. Call my baby mustache because she's growing on me. <laughs> I don't think so, Gabby. <laughs> I call my baby mustache because she always gets in the way when I'm trying to kiss someone. <laughs> Brennan. I call my baby mustache because he knows he must ash consent. Yes. Bill. I call my baby mustache because she always ends up in my mouth, even when I don't really want her to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And that is our show. That is our show. Jeez, uh, oh my goodness. Thank you so, so, so much uh, for tuning in to tonight's show. If you enjoyed tonight's show, be sure and tell your friends about it. Uh, please like this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like I said earlier, every subscription we get gets us closer to our goal of 1,000 subscribers, which is when we start making that sweet, sweet YouTube money, baby. Uh, so we just want to remind you that you can send all those donations in to Venmo at Fancy Hobo Improv. It's at the bottom corner of your screen. Thank you so much for those who have donated so far. Uh, again, like Jesse, like Stacy, like Electric, like Jamie, like Lisa. Um, thank you so much for donating. We really, really appreciate it. Every single one of them means so much. Our next show uh, is going to be next Saturday night. It is our Dungeons and Dragons improv show called Hazards and Hijinks. That show airs next Saturday, August 29th at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Be sure and tune into that. Uh, be sure and follow us at Fancy Hobo Improv on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on all of our social media platforms. We're also on TikTok now for, oh, jeez. Uh, we're, 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 we're catching up with the time, slowly but surely. Um, thank you again so, so much for coming out. We mean it so much. Uh, we will be here every single Saturday for the rest of this month. And starting next month, we have shows every Friday and every Saturday night. So much improv, so much. Uh, so please be sure and tune in for our uh, special shows coming out next month. We've got, uh, we're bringing back the... Um, the Exquisite Hobo Project, which is a script writing and a live stage reading of a script that we read. Um, and it is going to be the premiere of our very first Ladies' Night at Fancy Hobo. So I am very excited for that. Uh, that is about all the news we have. So thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, Fancy Hobo, signing off.
Good night, everybody.